A reading from the book of prophet Isaiah chapter 50 verses 5 to 9. The Lord God has opened my ear and I was not rebellious. I did not turn backward. I gave my back to those who struck me and my cheeks to those who pulled out the beard. I did not hide my face from insult and spitting. The Lord God helps me. Therefore, I have not been disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like flint. And I know that I shall not be put to shame. He who vindicates me is near. Who will contend with me? Let us stand up together. Who are my adversaries? Let them confront me. It is the Lord God who helps me, who will declare me guilty. All of them will wear out like a garment. The moth will eat them up. The word of the Lord. Second reading. A reading from the letter of St. James, chapter 2, verses 14 to 18. What good is it, my brothers and sisters, if someone claims to have faith but has no deeds, can such faith save them? Suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food. If one of you says to them, Go in peace, keep warm and well fed, but does nothing about their physical needs, what good is it? In the same way, faith by itself if it is not accompanied by action, is dead. But someone will say, You have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without deeds, and I will show you my faith by my deeds. The Word of the Lord A reading from the Gospel according to St. Mark Jesus went on with his disciples to the villages of Caesarea Philippi, and on the way he asked his disciples, Who do people say that I am? And they answered him, John the Baptist, and others Elijah, and still others one of the prophets. He asked them, But who do you say that I am? Peter answered him, You are the Messiah. And he sternly ordered them not to tell anyone about him. Then he began to teach them, that the Son of Man must undergo great suffering and be rejected by the elders, the chief priests, and the scribes, and be killed, and after three days rise again. He said all this quite openly. And Peter took him aside and began to rebuke him. But turning and looking at his disciples, he rebuked Peter and said, Get behind me, Satan. For you are setting your mind not on divine things, but on human things. He called the crowd with his disciples and said to them, If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it the saving gospel of the Lord. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, my dear children and my dear young people, we are on the 15th of September, Sunday, 24th Sunday of the ordinary time. The gospel passage that comes to us is from Mark chapter 8 verses 27 onwards. The teaching here, there are two parts. The first part speaks to us about the profession of faith by Peter in the so-called, in the, the village of Caesarea of Philippi. This is a city that was very famous during the time of Roman empire and the Roman invasions. Now here Jesus is asking Peter and the disciples what 
is it that the people say about me? And then he's asking, what do you say about me? Our, the Holy Gospel is full of professions of faith, like that of Peter, and also the, that of Martha, that of uh, uh, Thomas the Apostle, and that of John. Here, Jesus is asking all of us today, who is Christ to my life? Who is Jesus for you? We have all the examples from all other people, the testimonies, but not. But he's asking one question for you and for me. Who is Jesus? Which is very important. And then we go to the second part, where Jesus for the first time proclaims and foretells his death and resurrection. For the first time, he speaks about his death and resurrection in chapter 8. For the second time in chapter 9. For the third time in chapter 10. Jesus says to us, he has come to lay down his life for the whole humanity. It is only through passion and death of Christ that he is there to glorify the maximum of the revelation of God's love, God the Father, whose love for the humanity and the response of Christ in the fullness of his love to the Father in abandoning all that is his in order to die on the cross. Therefore, we are asked, we are called to be open to this question. Who is Christ to myself and to yourself? And what does his passion, death and resurrection mean to my life? Let us pray. God, our loving Father, help us to profess our faith in your powerful name and presence in this world, in the person of Christ your Son, through the power of the Holy Spirit. Help us to be witnesses for the passion, death, and resurrection of your Son. Help us to be true witnesses and authentic messengers of the words of salvation offered to us. Therefore, Father, we thank you and we praise you through Christ our Lord. Amen.